Hello, welcome to Geeky Hijinks Home and Mischief Makers, and today, we're looking at Malignant. Malignant. Rated R, September 10th. Well, this one was a bit divisive, wasn't it? Now, I only checked out this film over the weekend, but beforehand, all I saw was many different types of thumbnails from angry, disappointed, sad, jubilant, ecstatic, happy, or in the middle. So I was thinking to myself, what kind of movie am I about to watch? Which for me was very surprising because when you hear the name James Wan, everyone rarely complains. Everything he touches turns to gold with films like The Conjuring and Saw, which rejuvenated the horror genre. He done a very guilty pleasure film of mine called Dead Silence, and he pretty much started a whole universe. But I think what it is after thinking about it is that James Wan is held in such high regard by everyone that he has to make gold every single time. Which can put a bit of pressure on someone because if they want to do something a bit different, a bit experimental, like Malignant for example, he knows that many people might not like this, but some might love it. And that's what we've got here. We've got a film that could be very jarring to some, like mind blowing to others, or just like, what the hell is that? Those are the kind of emotions you're gonna feel when watching this film, whether you like it or not. But before I begin in what I liked and didn't like about the film, what is it all about? Now Malignant, starring Annabelle Wallace, Maddie Harris, and George Young, is about a woman called Madison who is paralyzed by shocking visions of grisly murders. And her torment worsens as she discovers that these waking dreams are in fact terrifying realities. Now before I begin with the rest of my review guys, I have something I wish to share with you. One of my biggest, darkest secrets. You see, for years and years now I've been afflicted with this disease, this parasite if you will, that latches itself into my mind. I watch a film, a film that has various plot points and twists and turns and reveals and this parasite points out everything to me. It shows me this and that hours before the film ends so I can watch a film and 50 minutes in I know how it's going to end and nothing surprises me. I just want to watch a film now that surprises me but this damn damn parasite will not let me enjoy anything anymore. And you may be afflicted too. This thing is called a BFB, which if you're wondering what that means is big film brain. Everyone has one. I have one. My one's called Brian. Say hello, Brian. See, Brian, he enters my mind when he wants to when I'm watching a film like this that has a twist. And instead of me sitting back and let me enjoy it, he enters my mind and he tells me what's going to happen hours and hours before it ends, which is really, really annoying. But there was one thing you did get, did you, Brian? One little twist with someone in the attic, no spoilers, but there was one thing you didn't see coming and that surprised me, so yeah, he needed a little bit more practice. Anyway, back to the review. Now let's start with what I liked about this film and that is James Wan himself. Now this guy is a fantastic director. Whether he should have abandoned Conjuring 3 for this, that's a story for another day. Me personally, I think he should have stuck with the Conjuring 3, completed it, had a great trilogy in his hands, then moved on to something crazy like Malignant instead. But you know, it's done, it's done, you can't change that. But with James Wan, what he brings to a horror movie is atmosphere, you can feel it. Now I watch so many horrors every week, mainly Shudders and some other horror films too. And the one thing, the one thing I can say about all of them is I'm just watching a screen. And what I mean by that is, I don't feel the film pop out at me. I'm just watching a film and I can't feel the atmosphere, I can't feel the tension or suspense. Within five to ten minutes, I could feel this movie. When it gets foggy, it feels like the fog is coming out of my TV and engulfing my room. When the film gets dark and the lights dim, I could be in a lit room and I feel, I feel like I'm in the pitch dark. The atmosphere and the cinematography this guy uses to set the mood, he can't be touched. I don't know what he does, but he's such a gift for just pulling it into the movie or putting the movie out to you. It's non-parallel, like I can't think of a director, maybe Mike Flanagan, who's another fantastic horror director. There are only two that can really have that effect on me. But talking about cinematography, the guy, he never fails to put a smile on my face. There's a shot where, almost like a video game, now I'll mention it, there's a lot of homages to other different genres of horror films. So there's a lot of like slasher films, Friday the 13th, we get those kind of vibes. But I was getting a lot of Silent Hill vibes. There's like scenes where the room would transform around our main character 
and it will go from one location to the next very much like Silent Hill and in that cinematography shot cinematography shot what am I talking about in that over the head shot where she's running from room to room very much like a video game like you're controlling someone running away from something so there's a lot of Silent Hill references especially with um the phone call as well because in Silent Hill the phone rang all the time and there was a creepy voice near the end so it wouldn't surprise me if James Wan got influences from not just films but classic video games too but James Wan overall did a great job at directing this based on what he had got because I believe that had he had more control over the writing and more of the screenplay this film could have been much better because this film isn't exactly perfect but the way he directed it was now the antagonist of this film was great he reminded me of Cropsey from The Burning and The Girl from The Grudge if they got together one night and nine minutes later there was a baby Ta da you've got the villain of the film now when I first saw it in the first five minutes of the movie because that first five minutes was really jarring I thought I had the wrong film for a second because I was thinking what is this like why does it why does it feel like the beginning of Night of the Creeps and it's nothing like Night of the Creeps but it, it felt like a sci-fi film and when you see a glimpse of the killer early on it looks just like Sam without his mask on so I was thinking Sam what, what are you doing in this film but the killer overall looks great he moves moves like very elegantly he always moves like Neo from the Matrix in the Burly Brawl I watched that fight scene the other day so when I watched this film after I was like he moves like Neo like doing all his backflips and moving around and he's like the Matrix so it's like if Cropsies and the grudge lady's baby um, took a red pill, met Morpheus, that's your villain. And it, and it was great. I had so much fun with him. He was vicious, he was visceral, he was savage. That end scene, which I'm going to touch on in a second, but yeah, it was one of my favorite parts of the film. And my favorite part of the film was the third act, the prison scene. What the hell was that all about? When that popped up on the screen, I was laughing my head off i <laughs> i knew like i mentioned i knew what the twist was but when it gave it to me i wasn't ready i wasn't ready for that it was insane i was laughing i was smiling i was showing my girlfriend <laughs> she looked so scarred when i watched it with her me I had the biggest smile on my face it was so dumb it was so stupid it was so over the top it was so violent but i loved it and yeah, like, say what you want about the film, don't get me wrong, I don't think this film is anything special, I don't think it's groundbreaking, I don't think it's breathing new life into the horror genre, because I think the first part of the film was lame, but that third act made it so, so worth it, so say what you want about the film, that was a great third act. Now I am going to segue into my dislikes with the acting, because the acting wasn't bad, the acting was okay, it was just very, very bland, and the characters you couldn't really engage with at all in my opinion if you did great but for me i didn't really care about them i was just with them for the ride to see what was going on now when you hear actors like patrick wilson and vera famiga they just ooze charisma ooze chemistry and in the previous films like the conjuring one and two and three you're just with them you're like on this side you're not you don't see anything bad happen to these characters the james one is capable of hiring good capable actors but in this film there's a lot of people saying well i think they were acting like this to be cheesy or over the top and i'm like nah now nah, i think they were just bland i don't think the acting was bad i just think it was like as average as it comes so going into this film if you just if you just like beige if you like beige acting you have the time of your life like i mentioned see it through to the third act and you won't be disappointed now the music overall in the film is pretty good it has this 80 synthesizer feel that gives it that 80 slash of film but there is one song in it called Where Is My Mind, which is a song by the Pixies. Great song if you haven't heard of it. Go on iTunes or Spotify, download it. I love it. It's got some crazy lyrics, but it's very addictive. And they do like a little techno version of it, which I think was in Fight Club. But I use it in this film in the most random places. When there's a big twist or a big reveal, they play this music and it really jars me. It really pulled me out of the scene. So there's a one scene, for example, where the main character Maddie reveals to her sister that she's been adopted and instead of like the reaction or the, the human aftermath the, the conversations had about this it just holds on the sister's shocked face and this music plays Sydney I'm adopted so 
So I was thinking to myself, imagine if this music was used in other films when there's big reveals or big twists, because if this music was used in those moments, those moments would have sucked. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. Also, the CGI in this film wasn't great. Why have you got a knife? Okay. Not creepy. Anyway, the CGI in this film wasn't great. There were some scenes, especially when you see the killer being chased. It looks so bad. I can't tell if it was done on purpose. This film's so confusing. Were things done on purpose? Were things done because they were just done and it just turned out badly I can't tell but it didn't look good whatever it was and like I mentioned even though I was hooked I was intrigued didn't look at my phone loved the rhythm I loved the directing loved the cinematography I wasn't fully in love with most of the film the first act in particular was a bit clunky a bit unremarkable but to get through was a bit of a slugfest get to the second act okay but by that point I figured everything out so I had nothing to really look forward to because come the end my thoughts were confirmed and then the third act kicked in I loved it but getting there was a bit of a journey and my last few points are these one that last act the third act is great it's so much fun but I'm gonna pick it to pieces now because there is one scene where a policeman goes into an apartment building to find a dead body the killer is in the room with him the, the clip the cop almost kills the killer and the killer runs out and it's running as far as it can it's dropping down buildings dropping down like the the scaffolding hitting the floor running punching through walls to get away the lot this this thing is trying to get away and like its life depends on it's like this cop is its only weakness in life this cop is chasing after it cardio champion of the year might i'll be dead after one minute chasing after this thing but they're chasing each other good chasing to be fair and they go into like the sewers go underground chasing each other all over the place and the killer is trying to get away from this cop but there is no tomorrow it is generally fearing for its life this one cop this one cop one cop and then the third that comes and it's in the police station many cops in there and <laughs> i don't want to ruin the third act for people but can you see what i'm trying to say if you've seen the film one cop big problem police station no swear so when it came to that part i was like what this makes no sense to me entertaining but yeah it makes no sense and my final point the film had no consequences this film should have had a bad ending and that's not a spoiler but it is <laughs> but it needed a bad ending these kind of movies you don't have good endings some horror films need a bad ending to give it weight this film had no consequences at all. Everyone that died or killed in this film, you only knew for a minute. Who cares? It, like you needed some weight to the film. You need to feel, oh my God, I can't believe that happened to that person and that happened to that person. But nothing like that. So when the film ended, it just wrapped up so quickly, so neatly, and it was just very rushed. And I finished the film thinking, that was it. It was just like over so quick. I didn't feel... I didn't feel anything like I just felt a bit empty yeah I enjoyed that third act like I keep mentioning the third act because it's, it's really fun but come the end of the film I just felt nothing because it gave me nothing I didn't feel any loss or sadness for any of the characters because they never really I don't feel like I actually went through anything it was just wrapped up way too wizzy 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 can't you see but what I'm trying to say is it just ended too easy it wrapped up things too sweetly for me that's not horror Overall guys, this isn't a bad film, this isn't a good film, it's just an okay but entertaining James Wan film. Would I watch it again? I probably wouldn't because getting to that third act, the first two acts don't make it worth it for me in my opinion. I love the directing, the cinematography, I love the, vi the villain, I love the way the film looked, I love the, the slasher element, that really caught me off guard, I was thinking hey it's a slasher film with a supernatural aspect to it. Which leads me to another point I just remembered, what's with the electric powers? 
that's never explained. But any, anyway, I am uh, getting off track one more time. But then again, you got the characters are not memorable, they're not charismatic, they're not really memorable. They kind of remind me of Saw characters in the later bad Saw films, in my opinion. The CGI isn't great, the third act is amazing, but again, there's a bit of a slugfest. What I will give to James Wan, though, is he did something different. He didn't invigorate horror, he didn't breathe new life into it, he didn't recreate the horror game like everyone's saying, because that's an insult to horror directors that are coming out now. They're doing something different, like Fish is Fun, Psycho Gorman, no one's talking about those films, yet they're doing something similar, they're, they're, they're having a homage to films gone by and they're fun, but no one's speaking about them. The Vigil, great horror film, no one's really speaking about that, for me The Vigil is better than this, but James Wan has done something different, he's experimented, he's having fun while making this film, and for that I gotta give it to him. What, did it resonate with me? Not too much. But on that note, I'm going to give Malignant a 3 out of 5 geeky coins and a one time spin. So, guys, ow. That's why you disappear. Okay, okay, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Jeez. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. That was my review of Malignant. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was it a snooze fest or the greatest film you've ever seen? Comment in the comments, let me know, because I genuinely just didn't even like this video. Drop me those likes, because it always does help. But until next time, stay out of trouble.